per se, but I don't think anyone's too upset by this. This is not one of those games where you look at the prizes and think, oh no. Yeah, I'd ra I rather say when I look at these prizes, wait, what is that doing here? Are we looking at the right deck? Galarian Zapdos V is not a card we've seen a lot in these Luya V-Star decks. But with Arceus sort of clawing its way back with the ability to just attack for a single energy card, thanks uh, to the ability Fighting Instinct to just reduce the total energy needed for every V Pokemon your opponent has in play, it can add some good utility. And mm -hmm. it's going to be important to see if it's ever utilized in this matchup. Not going to be doing much against Lukia. <laughs> it's a pretty weak two prize Pokemon, but who knows? Maybe it'll pop up here and there. Honestly, being in the prizes might be the safest place for it. Uh, you, you know, you're not drawing into it. You're not picking up something you just don't need. But we are heading on into the game. The starters down. It's going to be an Orangaroo for Andrew Mahone and the Stoutland V over there for Jose Marrero. So starting out with the Capture Energy, one of the best cards you want to see to make sure you can dive right on into the deck and start filling the bench as you need it. Uh, you obviously need to go through a couple of steps to set up these Lugia Vs and uh, you know keep the ball rolling. You've got to get things in the discard. Everything has to be in the right place. And that's something that can really separate a, you know, a master of this deck from somebody who's just dabbling in it. Absolutely. It's crazy to think that maybe towards the beginning of its lifespan, Capture Energy was not an inclusion in the Lugia V-Star deck, but after Tord Reklev won the International Championships with four Capture Energy in the deck, it's become sort of a staple for a lot of these players playing it, even with the new tech cards to deal with the new threats up in the meta. Uh, interestingly enough, though, a great start. Has the Archeops already in the hand, can just discard that and the Quick Ball to find another Archeops trying to set up. This deck wants to do everything, no matter what matchup. It wants to get those two Archeops in the discard pile to then be able to utilize the V-Star power on Lugia to put those into play. Skipping, essentially, the process that would be playing Rare Candy, evolving up. It's the reason that Archeops is so powerful in this deck is because you can sort of cheat it into play. Well, there's more to come from Jose in his hand, but he's opting to just pass it over. So m kind of putting the onus on Andrew to, to go and make his setup work as well. He's going to open up with the Evolution Incense. So he's going to be going in looking for an Evolution Pokemon. Uh, pretty sure we can guess which one that's going to be. But while he's in there, you've got to make sure you know exactly what's available to you. So he's going to be rummaging through that deck. Uh, but of course, the Archeops comes out, no questions asked there, has to be in the hand so you can get it into the discard pile to pull it right back. And there, a beautiful Ultra Ball on turn one from Andrew Mahone, double Archeops, uh, just thrown right in the discard, right where they need to be. Yeah, if you could dream any scenario of turn one, it's just that crisp Ultra Ball and then right away throwing those two Archeops into the discard pile. It's going to make it pretty easy the following turn. However, Andrew's setup is going to look a little bit different than Jose's. The risk of putting just a single Lugia V into play in this matchup, you really can't afford that. In this matchup where both players are playing with the same decks, it all comes down to the prize trade. How are you using these Pokemon to sort of, we'll see once this game evolves, it's going to just be one hit knockouts, back and forth and back and forth, is what these players are trying to go for. However, that all relies on getting Archeops into play. If this Lugia potentially gets targeted down, Andrew is just unable to come back from it at that point. You yeah. give Jose an extra turn, things get out of hand. So Andrew may be looking to potentially try and get a second Lugia V down to make sure that, hey, I may put more prize cards into play for now, but I'm going to ensure that I can execute my strategy the following turn and therefore put myself in an okay spot. But hey, Marty's a good way to maybe slow Jose down a little bit. There's only one Archeops in the discard pile. You just put one that was in the hand on the bottom of the deck could be a little bit tricky for Jose to maybe find everything that's needed on this following turn. Well, the Mani did come after the Primate Wisdom as well. So Andrew really maximizing how many cards he sees. And that has been a very, very fruitful Mani for him. Uh, you know, was able to uh, make sure he drew into some extra cards and keep the ball rolling. As you were saying, you've got to make sure that you have options available on the bench. And you can get another option out pretty easily with a Capture Energy. He's just mulling over where to put it. There it goes down onto the Lugia V. As he goes right back in the deck, to keep on getting some Pokemon in play. And as you say, if you fall behind, you miss a turn in these prize trades, you can get punished really, really easily in some of these, uh, you know, even tight mirror matchups. You do not want to fall behind. So it looks like he's just mulling over his options there, uh, basing what he picks and what he's got in the hand. I do see another Lugia in there as well. So kind of ready to go on that front and can now start to expand his options. Yeah, one thing you've always got to consider when you're playing a Lugia mirror match is there's so many different versatile attackers that can be played because these decks are always playing for aura energy and sometimes energy like the hiding dark energy or heat fire energy. It means that there's a bunch of different Pokemon that can be used. So Andrew's playing Manaphy in the deck and that's something you've always got to consider potentially putting into play because a card like Raikou, which hits the bench and can hit a Lugia for weakness, can 
instantly throw the game south if you are really having to deal with that. Yeah, I think what, what Andrew's doing here, uh, just really trying to figure it out, Jose did quite a good job of, I guess, hiding a little bit of that extra information, not giving it up too easily and just showing exactly what he's got. But you're right, with the Aurora Energy, uh, you know, you're able to play so many options. One of those Aurora Energy, but hitting the discard as a result of this Ultra Ball. So Jose going back into his deck. Uh, looks like he's going to be pulling up that Lumineon. Uh, so being able to see more cards here is really important. It looks like he's prepping the turn quite nicely for himself. Uh, but he did, of course, manage to get that Lugia evolved. That does mean the access to the ability is going to be there, but I think he's going to need another Archaeops in the discard. Maybe that turn one, who has been a little bit slower, a little more cautious with it, uh, is coming back to haunt him a little bit here. Yeah, Jose really wants to see a lot of cards, but because two Aurora Energy were drawn into off that Marnie, he can't afford to play Research to discard mm -hmm. the second one. You need at minimum four and usually these decks are playing four copies of Aurora Energy and a copy of some other type of energy, like the Hiding Dark Energy, like the Heat Fire Energy. In this case, it's that exact circumstance, playing a bunch of different types of energy, two Hiding Dark and a Horror Psychic. But with this hand... This is, this is looking... Uh, wow. Yeah, this is looking ideal, I don't think. But he has got the Evolution Incense, so he's able to go back in, grab an Archaeops. Uh, but he just needs another way to you know get that into the discard. That's kind of the... Step two that he may be missing in this one. So it does go for that. Uh, you know, the big thing here is being able to, to get that role and get that ability in play nice and early. Uh, I just think he's a little bit behind it right now, um, you know, with maybe unreliable ways to discard. We'll have to take another look at his hand. Andrew's hand came out pretty nicely, I think. Um, but just doesn't have a draw option in it. So, uh, you know, Primal Turbo is something that both these trainers are going to want to go for. Here's going to be a big Primate Wisdom. Can see one more card this turn. Trying to find something like a Quick Ball or an Ultra Ball. Even Aurora Energy will also get there. Can discard the Archaeops from hand. And here we go. Big Primate Wisdom. Do we see it? And there it is, the Ultra Ball. That's a <laughs> huge time grab. Can discard the second Archaeops. And the Summoning Star can put both of these into play. That's a huge grab. That is so game-winning potentially for Jose to keep himself in this match. Primate Wisdom's silly. <laughs> it's, it's a very he silly ability. likes to around, monkey around a little bit. Yeah, you know? it's a silly ability. When, uh, when you hit what you need, it, it feels so good. When you, when you don't, it, it feels like one of the most useless. But these top players always seem to hit what it, they need. Uh, you know, more power to them. Oh, There's wow. the powerful energy. And even though he drew the Ultra Ball, not wanting to give up enough pieces in the hand uh, to, you know, get the, the Primal Turbo on the board for Archeops. So, Handing it over to Andrew, he's going to evolve into the Lugia V-Star. Now, he has access to his Summoning Star V-Star power. Uh, as you can see, picking up the discard, why not, right? You, you've got two of them in there. Mm -hmm. Get him on the bench. <laughs> yeah, and I have to be thinking on Jose's side of the choice to not use the, uh, uh, the Summoning Star to put those into play. It mainly has to just be either A, the resources in hand, or B, the Collapse Stadium is really the main thing that I was eyeing there because that means that you already have so many of these V Pokemon in play. You need to keep yourself into this prize trade. But Andrew's already got the Summoning Star, already firing off these Primal Turbos. This will be an interesting choice. This Stoutland V is going to be an easy two prize cards for Andrew. Doesn't even have to commit any powerful energy to this active. And having access to powerful energy as late as possible will always be an advantage. It's an extra 80 damage you have throughout the course of the game to apply anywhere. Even utilizing Speedwing on Archaeops can be a great way to apply a lot of damage later on. If, if it pushes you over that line, keeping it is so, so important. So I love that he's playing around it. There's going to be, I believe it's the Gift Energy. Another ca he's just throwing down the Capture Energies. Uh, why not? You know, he's got access to Primal Turbo. Get him out, get him going, and now his board's set up. Doesn't need the Capture Energy as much for its, its benefit of being able to find Pokemon. He can just use it, like you say, preserve that powerful energy, make sure you can hit those knockouts later. And, you know, once that Oranguru gets out of the way, that's going to be a Lugia coming to the fore. It's powered up for the Tempest Dive. Easy two prizes. And talking about that prize trade earlier, that is going to put Andrew in a phenomenal position to play through this. So uh, there's the Oranguru. May as well Primate Wisdom it for a little bit and see what he gets. Yeah, that was a That's uh, two yeah. for two uh, on Ultra Balls off Primate Wisdom he in likes, the last couple of times. He likes finding the Ultra Balls, man. That, that's that's, that's favorite card to fetch out of the top of the deck. <laughs> Not much else going on the hand, though. But at this point, you've kind of achieved all you want. By saving the powerful energy, too, it means that this Lugia does exactly what it wants to do. It takes two prize cards, puts yourself in a great spot, and if this other Lugia responds, you still have your powerful energy left in deck to easily respond to another two prizes. Andrew's in a really solid spot in this case. Jose has to put something together on this turn to swing the tempo. This Lugia already is emitting pressure to knock out some of these bench Pokemon, even some more powerful energies. You have to imagine, essentially, you're going second in this matchup now. 
and your opponent has already taken a two price knockout. Yep. Sometimes in this mirror, when both players are trying to do essentially very similar things and get risky, and now we see the Ultra Ball come down, it right. gets there. I think the main risk here from Jose to go for that play was he put the Serena on top of the deck with the Primate Wisdom mm -hmm. last turn, which means when the Ultra Ball is played, the top deck is going to change. Yep. Meaning you will have essentially nothing in hand but the ability to attack. I have to imagine if you're Jose, you're maybe wondering, do I really still feel confident that this is the right route? I shouldn't have put these into play last turn, or am I may maybe regretting not taking some aggression and maybe taking the knockout, it even as, as as hurtful as it is to put yourself in a, a pretty negative position when it comes to drawing cards and progressing your board. It was definitely a, a smart play. It was a, a little bit cautious, maybe you could say, um, you know, making sure he had that Serena, but uh, you know, now he gets to go in. He's just rummaging through the Pokemon choices to see what he can uh, pick out with this Ultra Ball. Uh, I think you know he needs to be to be smart about it. Uh, the Archaeops is going to be going into the hand. Uh, that there's something staff from Jose's side, but it is of course behind the pace a little bit. Uh, two Archaeops coming down onto the bench. No shock there. Pretty standard and something I, I think we should get used to over the course of the weekend. Here's the first Primal Turbo, and this is where those numbers are going to be very, very important. Uh, there is a powerful energy and a powerful energy. So the numbers are ticking up very much so. Uh, the big thing here is, can he push himself all the way to swing the prize trade, essentially, with a huge knockout? Yep, so this is going to be enough here. Plus 60 from the powerful energy. It means that the speed wing yep. is going to be dealing 280 damage to this active. But again, Andrew's got plenty of ways to take this knockout back, and I think that's what Jose is sort of understanding of, okay, well, where do I go from here, right? I can even things up in the prize trade, but Andrew's going to always be able to fire back because Archaeops makes it so easy to fire attacks off. Okay. You don't yep. need to draw cards. All you need to do is find the Pokemon you want, and you can just apply pressure and take knockouts. So I'm really interested to see what Jose does besides this to prepare. And this is what this matchup is about. You can't just think in the current turn. You have to think forward. Jose has to already be thinking, okay, there is a, a really high chance, probably like a 90% chance that this Lugia gets knocked out. Maybe applying something that's a little bit different, like the Espeon VMAX to shut off maybe Veltal taking a knockout yep. could be a good way to, to try and swing this matchup up, but it, it feels so difficult in the spot. Well, it is going to be a knockout at the end of this turn. Of course, everything's set up there. And Jose following up you know, with the Espeon V, obviously it'll become the V uh, Max, and then being able to go from there uh, and, and keep things going. So if Andrew can't respond, Jose will go ahead in the prize trade. It's really on Andrew now. To, to match up this following turn. Uh, the Tempest Dive was, a, was an easy knockout, and perfect numbers must feel really, really nice for Jose. But let's see uh, the options that Andrew has. It's a, it's a pretty big old hand, uh, but I'm not seeing the grandest options. He can, of course, uh, you know, evolve that Lugia on this turn. I don't see an issue there, uh, but you know, he's gonna have to keep going. Uh, and if he loses another Lugia, does he have another one to follow? Yeah, so at this point, after this Lugia, Andrew just wants to use single prize just to close yep. this game up at this point. And the hand was filled up pretty nicely because of that gift energy on that bench mm -hmm. Lugia. So having eight cards to start the turn off after the draw for turn means Andrew's got plenty of ways to take the knockout. And, and Andrew understands his position. Usually you want to try to avoid knocking or taking knockouts with these two prize Pokemon if you don't need to. But at this position, Andrew understands. I'm going to go to two prize cards. You now have put three Pokemon into play that could potentially be knocked out as two prizers. You yep. can't use Luminion to remove your to, to remove it off the board because you're not taking a knockout on my Lugia V-Star. So yep. I'm fine to just attack you again for 300 plus damage. Well, at this point, there's not much else Andrew has to do. And being able to just throw powerful energy on, there's no V-Guard energy into play. Nothing that's going to reduce the damage. So it seems pretty pretty straightforward here that as long as yep. Andrew has the other powerful, which he does, it's, it's he's right not going to Lugia. Yep, there yeah, it is. And saving it has worked out really nicely for him. Co going back to, to where we started this one, it is going to put the Tempest Dive on the money with 280 damage exactly. So another Primal Turbo, uh, maybe just trying to thin some uh, options out there a little bit, take another look at what's in the deck. But there's the powerful energy coming to the fore, uh, along with the Aurora energy as well. That makes four, and that makes a knockout over onto the V-Star. So Andrew, of course, showing just how fluid this deck is, being able to keep knockouts going, and that early advantage that he took is starting to pay off. I think Jose could fall a little bit behind here. You know, the Espeon isn't going to be able to, to go quite as crazy as something like this Lugia V-Star. The Espeon will, of course, be an issue for this evil tile that has just hit the bench. But I think Andrew probably has ways to play around it. He has his choice of those single prize attackers now. Yeah, I think still has access to Primate Wisdom as well. There's no cards like Roxanne that are going to disrupt the top deck. Could even yep. just put the boss's orders on top of the deck already. Utilizing the Aurora energy, going to get rid of this Dunsparce. And Andrew's pretty much saying, oh, he just attached. 
Yep, yeah. the energy just came down onto the uh, onto the Charizard, so it's all good. And there we go. We're gonna just go and see the Storm Dive. Uh, or speed wing, rather it is. I'm getting the names mixed up uh, from Tem when I'm over Tempest in Japan. Tempest Dive Tempest is Dive. what I here. Okay. How's, that, how's that been adapting for you? Have you learned the names in like three different ways? I've had, oh, two, yeah. Two. <laughs> I've had to adjust. I think um, it's Assembly Star in, in Japanese okay. for the ability for Lugia V Star. So it's very different. Uh, a lot of different changes. Uh, pardon me as we uh, go through this weekend and, it's all and sort good. of figure everything it's out. It's all good. I, we know... For Lugia, it makes a lot of sense. There's only one attack, yeah. uh, so we're pretty safe on that front. Anyway, we're over to Jose, and he is going uh, in the deck once more. He's using the Quick Ball to be able to try and find something to help him fight back. He still has both the Archeops, so he can still fill the uh, board with the energy he requires. And it is going to be an evil tile of his own. Uh, we see a number of options there uh, in the hand. He's going to Primal Turbo to kick things off. Uh, so there's a double Turbo. He's just picking out Aurora's. Yeah, he's going to be... Gonna be able to get this evil tile powered up neatly, I think. Yeah, you never really want to concede games if you don't. But if I'm Jose here, I would even just be considering conceding. I mean, you have to look towards next turn. This Yavel tile can push you to two prize cards, but from there, how are you closing the game out? How are you taking your last prize cards? There's no way to put extra prize Pokemon in play with something like an Echoing Horn at all. You take this knockout, but from there, you're still just at two prizes. Your opponent's gonna go to one. They've got Boss's orders potentially to get knockout and ties this early on in the tournament you really want to avoid. And oh. it, it, when there's still a potential like there is in this game, Jose's not completely out of it. There's still a world where he wins this game, but you just, the time is so important. And in this format, finishing three games, especially in mirror matches, is just so difficult. Jose's gonna play this turn out, and I don't blame him for it, but I mean, it's, it's precious time. It's time you've always mm -hmm. gotta consider having. And I mean, even using actions like this where you're ultra balling, you're progressing the board, but it just feels so bad to take this long of a time in a game and just being like, yeah, I was already off when I missed that first turn. Like yeah. we've just we've got to go to the next, and now I've got even less time to try to pull back two games. Yeah. This is really from both trainers. I think the the full masterclass in, in how this deck operates, being able to go through all of the motions correctly. I think Jose got off to a slower start, and that's going to be the difference maker. But another two prizes for him here, as he does, of course, and that's the that game. evil tile <laughs> and get it there. Uh, the Charizard. As soon as you get those prizes down. Yeah, he's just going to be able to, to play this one through. Uh, boss's orders, yep. two prizes on the Luminion. Good game. Go to game two. And that is the Lugia Mirror match for you. That is a master class in what happens when you do not keep pace with your opponent right now in the Lugia <laughs> Mirror match. You went first, but essentially it was like Jose was going second. And going second on top of losing a two-prize Pokemon, it's really, really hard to recover from that, especially when your opponent doesn't put a lot of these two-prize Pokemon in play in response. You've got to find a way to win the matchup back. Both players are going to have Archeops out. Both players are going to be able to take knockouts. It strictly comes down to the fact of how do you manage your energies and your resources, uh, also known as can you attack every turn. And the second, part, the second part is, is there a Pokemon in play that you're going to be able to positively prize trade in? If you're going one for one and you're already down, I mean, my math could be wrong, but you're not going to win those games. Trust, uh, somebody who uh, enjoys a single prize deck myself, it always feels good to be ahead in the prize trade. and. And that is, you know, it's so important in the game right now with mirror matches and obviously three prizes, everything ranging really, right? You sit down at a regional, you could play against decks that give up three prizes, two prizes or one prize. And it's such an interesting way to look at the game on what are you willing to give up? You know, and then you've got cards like Charizard that rely on your opponent having prizes. It's kind of a little bit uh, crazy to think about compared to, to previous formats where it was just kind of like, well, it's one or two. We'll either all agree to trade two or we'll trade one, have fun. Um, and that's something I think is, is really cool in the metagame right now. But going into game two, obviously, Jose needs to get off to a much better start. Andrew, really, I think that was flawless. There was nothing I saw in that game where, where I was a little bit concerned. I mean, yeah, you started a Rangaroo, but he bounced right out of it. And this is going to be an interesting set of prizes. Oh, Ooh. boy. Well, there's the, there's the evil tile in there, but it is at the bottom, so he might be able to get it out. Um, an Archeops, a Pump Kaboo. The Radiant Charizard, which helped him close out the game, is gone. And uh, the Drapion V can, can stay there. Doesn't need to be out in this matchup at all. But the prize is over on Jose's side. One of the powerful energies, so his maximum available damage is uh, removed a little bit there. And he's starting off with the Espeon V. And the capture energy helps out. Uh, speaking of suboptimal starters, uh, Luminion V over on Andrew's side. Of course, there's plenty to do, but uh, you don't get to enjoy the ability when you start it in the active. Yeah, luckily Luminion V is a little bit better than cards like Crobat or Dedenne that we've seen in the past. Even, I mean, Dedenne is not a great example. Crobat couldn't return itself to the hand, right? So yep. once you put into play, if you start it, it essentially is just going to be there. It's going to provide no value for you and not do much. 
You really don't want to start it. But with Lumini on it, it differs because Aqua Return allows you to put it back into your hand. So it's not just like you don't ever get to utilize the ability to search out any supporter card. However, starting a two price Pokemon, going second, you really want to avoid. And a lot of the times, you'll see players decide to even commit their energy attachment to the active to try to move into a one price Pokemon if possible. But if it's not, again, you're at a, such a disadvantage. Going first is huge. Going first and being able to knock out a two prize Pokemon is an even bigger advantage. Sometimes you can't even claw back from it, as long as your opponent's being pretty conscious with, the, with what Pokemon they're putting into play. Well, speaking of Pokemon going into play, Jose getting that Lugia V down, getting the Primate Wisdom Orangaroo down, and activating that Primate Wisdom right away. So being able to look at another card, uh, that's always definitely helpful. That is going to be a research in there, I believe. And that's obviously huge for next turn, but that's wow, it. He's, he's just uh, going to scoop. That's it. He's just it, he's just conceding yeah, the game. I, look, I mean, look at the hand. It's uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's just all energy. With I mean, you could get an evolution incense, but you can't do anything with it. So uh, there we go to game three. Uh, Jose got rewarded for playing that game out because Andrew just decided there's no reason. And this is a smart choice by Andrew. Maybe be confused like, hey, well, Andrew didn't lose the game right away, right? Like, he can still play the evolution and since maybe start attaching to Luminion. But again, this mirror match, yeah. if you miss one beat, and that's a big beat to be missing. Uh, that's like <laughs> that's like a huge stepping stone to Turn miss one. when you're <laughs> trying to get set up. It's not even worth it sometimes to play. It's just a waste of the time. Andrew understands a tie is not great in day one for both of these players. Let's just go to game three. We've got 30 minutes on the clock. Surely we're going to finish a game at this but point. But I mean, even if you played the evolution in sense, okay, you've got the Archeops, cool. Uh, Nothing I, I, happens. What, yeah. what are you? What are you? You, you, can, you, you can't can get it into the discard. You can roar it away, but like you're not finding any of your basic Lugias. Oh, okay. and at that point, it's like you're going third. But yeah, <laughs> it, it was going to be like a horrible disadvantage, especially when your opponent has so many options to just knock out the Pokemon in the active. You're not like this scoop isn't like, or like conceding the game isn't saving like 20 minutes, so to say. But it's still precious time. And giving yeah. yourself essentially like 30 minutes to play best of one is plenty of time. That's like standard best of one time That's in actually, play Pokemon events. It's it's pretty big brain to, to think about it, right? To, I know some people say like, oh, you, should, you should always try and play it out. I, I don't agree. I just, I don't think that's true. In a number of cases, if you're already in the game, that's fine. But what was Andrew gonna do? He was gonna spend 10, 15 minutes trying to dig through that, maybe try and hit something, maybe try and get some energy in play, draw out another Pokemon. Then you go to game three and you've got 15 minutes. Okay, you're just looking at a tie because you both know you've got to play that big turn. You've got to step through everything with this deck. You've got to get the Archeops in the discard. You've got to, you've got to get the Archeops in the hand, then the discard. And so saving that time is actually the, the mark of an absolutely top trainer. So I really do uh, appreciate that. And it means we get to go to a game three, um, which we always like to see here on the stream. Let's get it. Game three. Oh, this going to be an advantage here. Going first. And that's an even just bigger advantage to game three as well. Just starting mm -hmm. this mirror match out. We'll take a mulligan, but we'll have things get set up quickly. I think Andrew's gonna like those mulligans because I don't think this hand was rocking much else as well. A lot of these searching options in the prize cards, it's not terrible. It's okay to draw them later. We haven't really talked a lot about this, but a lot of what these top players will do is something called mapping your prizes. And what that means is once they understand a key card, like maybe boss's orders is in the prize card or something like that, what they'll do or they have the option to do is play a little bit more aggressively. Say, hey, maybe I'll put my hand down a little bit or understand that I've got a 50% chance of taking boss off the prizes yep. and go for those plays. So a lot of the conception is, oh, all the good cards are prized, you don't have access to them. A lot of the times, yeah, it's bad to not have the cards that you want in your deck, but sometimes you have a better shot of just guaranteed finding them later on in the game once you start to take knockouts. It's over on Jose's side. Two oh. Lugia V in the prizes, but again, going first, you don't need to bench two Lugia V, so as long as there's a way to search things out, it's not a terrible position to be in, but we're getting into it. Game three here of our fourth round. It's a whole lot of Lugia in there. As we start with Andrew Mahone, he is going to be using the Oh, Andrew's going first, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he scooped, so he gets to... Yeah. I, it would be a bold move to just openly go second. I'll go second. <laughs> I bricked. I'll Ima go second. Imagine. Imagine. Anyway, speaking of uh, starts, we do have the Lugia V on the uh, side of Andrew Mahone. So he's going to be able to get uh, an extra card out with the Capture Energy. He's going for the Primate Wisdom once again. A little insight from that cheeky little Oranguru. And the Luminium V in the active for Jose. So being put in that awkward position where you've got it in there. Yes, you may be able to Aqua Return it out, but... Do you want it there just giving up two prizes for a, a very cheap knockout? That's what happened in game one. He didn't have to throw down those powerful energies. He gave up a cheap two prizes, yeah. and that put Andrew in the driving seat. I mean, you could just go for it with Lugia. You could fill it with capture energies and, you know, everything else you need and go from there. Oh, this is... Oh, he got bailed again. Ultra Ball again. This is off ridiculous. The what is this monkey feeding? What is yeah. he eating? How is he searching these out? <laughs> it's been Ultra Ball off everything. 
And Andrew may be regretting putting that Lugia V-Star on the top of the deck because mm -hmm. now Ultra Ball will change the order. And I think, yeah, Andrew's just deciding, uh, yeah. I don't even want to play the Ultra Ball. I want Lugia V-Star next turn. I'd rather just play the Ultra Ball to find like Luminion or something else to search the deck out to draw some cards. Action on to Jose. So everything I said about uh, Andrew, go over to Jose. That's a, oh, that's a no. horror psych energy. That is a horror energy and a very quick pass. Uh, just this heading on over. The game's Andrew. over. Yeah, he has game in hand, can find the Lugia V-Star. It doesn't matter what he grabs. As long as the Lugia V-Star is in hand, can attach the double turbo energy, search the powerful energy out of the deck here, and this is it. Andrew's yep. got it. All that's needed is the steps to complete it. Star. Summoning Star, V-Star power, go into play. And as long as there's the energy, which it doesn't matter, Luminion has 180 HP. There's no Easy. way all the remaining pro energies are prized. <laughs> and there it is. Andrew's got the cards there. What what a wacky set of three games. That was, uh, that is a a very interesting first match to put on stream. But nevertheless, Andrew Mahone will be your winner, advancing to four zero. Oh, there you have it, ladies and gents. Uh, we got one really good masterclass in uh, Lugia, uh, and then we got two games where. Actually, you kind of got to see the downside, right? What what can go wrong? Uh, both trainers displaying, uh, I'd say it was a, a masterclass in the, the mirror match game one. Uh, masterclasses in uh, Bricking and Bad Hands in uh, game number two. So not the best, not the, the full set that we really wanted to dive into. But of course, congratulations to Andrew, moving on to that 4-0 record, being able to keep his day going very, very nicely. Jose, he's one of those players who's going to be able to bounce back. I'm not too worried about him. I'm not thinking, oh, his day's over, his day's ruined. No, he's, he's very much still in the running. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things where I really love to sequence some of the later game turns in the Lugia Mirror match where things are pretty even and players are going back and forth using things like Aqua Return on Luminion to take knockouts on Pokemon like Charizard on Yveltal. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure we'll see plenty of Lugia V-Star mirrors <laughs> later on in the stream. It's a very powerful deck. You saw it just under 30% meta share today in the event. Congratulations to Andrew here about these players bringing Lugia V-Star for a reason. But there could only be one. Lugia, victorious champion, and uh, that's it.